sometimes we just don't know when to step up our game. I call it the everything is working just fine syndrome. Sure, 20 minutes on the treadmill is just fine, but if I'm looking for a full body transformation, a trainer would scoff at that, right? He'd turn up that 20 minutes to 40, add some kickboxing, maybe one of those crazy high-intensity interval training workouts, maybe some yoga on top of that to make sure I was truly dead. (laughs) Sometimes we need to dump this business out of our design lives too. Our new design life coach would tell you it may be time to kick your old FPGA prototyping system to the curb as well. FPGA prototyping certainly isn't new, and our needs for early firmware and software development certainly haven't gotten any better. If anything, it's gotten worse. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today, Jurgen Jaeger from Cadence Design Systems and I are talking about the next generation of FPGA-based prototyping and how the first scalable data center optimized enterprise prototyping system can get your system design up and running faster than ever before. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about Cadence Design Systems, Prodium X1. Hi, Jurgen. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Emilia. Glad to be here. So today's FPGAs can fit up to about 25 million gates. So why in the world would you try to fit a billion gates into a whole lot of FPGAs? Some customers or some companies are trying to use it as an ASIC replacement, which probably is not a good idea. You would need 40 or more of the biggest available FPGAs, every single one costing thousands of dollars. The billion gate ASIC may cost you only a few hundred dollars. Add to that power requirements, board real estate, and so on, and the probably not becomes a definitely not. Yeah. On the other hand, prototyping the ASIC is a totally different story. Now you have a platform for early pre-silicon software development to do hardware software integration, to run hardware regressions, even demonstrate the SOC under development to potential customers. So yes, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. But Jürgen, isn't the cost for a billion gate SOCs more than chip hardware than the software? Not exactly. Recent data from IBS shows that roughly 70% of the total cost to design a large complex ASIC are in the verification and software. Hmm. And more importantly, the pass to revenue is in the hardware software integration and the software running on the chip or system. Just take a look at a device that all of us are using on a constant basis, day and night, a smartphone. Yeah. Yes, it's a wonderful and elegant piece of hardware, but then only the software makes it work. Without it, it would just be a paperweight. Right. <laughs> okay, Jurgen, we're here to talk about FPGA-based prototyping, but what exactly is that? Well, in a nutshell, it enables the user to map a chip design into one or more FPGAs long before that chip has been put into silicon. And because FPGAs are reprogrammable, the FPGA implementation is in sync with the progressing maturity of the design. Sure. This FPGA prototype, as it runs at tens of megahertz and because it's real hardware, allows the user now to connect real interfaces, a keyboard, for example, a touchscreen, a USB port, and so on. And most importantly, to run the real firmware and software on it. So in a sense, a FPGA-based prototype can be a pre-production version of the actual chip and system, giving the user a true hardware and software verification and integration platform. Okay, but Jürgen, doesn't it cost time and money to develop and use a prototyping system? Of course it does. Nothing in life is ever free. However, the benefits greatly outweigh the small costs for the FPGA-based prototype system. Because prototyping accelerates software development and hardware software integration, which in return accelerates the time to revenue for that user. Here we see an example on the slide where the use of a prototyping system reduced the time from first silicon to product release from 75 days to 15 days. That are two months. Yeah. Now, just do the math. 
if the annual revenue for your product is, let's say, just $100 million, then every day is $300,000. Two months are $18 million. Wow. You can buy a whole lot of prototype system for $18 million. You sure can. Now, you're gonna, if I remember well, then FPGA-based prototyping is around for 15, 10 years maybe. So why would I need enterprise prototyping now? You're right. Your mom's and dad's prototyping just doesn't cut it anymore. To say it bluntly, because the old ways of doing FPGA-based prototyping just don't work anymore for today's and tomorrow designs. We don't try and drive on the autobahn with an ox cart. Use a Porsche or a Beamer if you want to go fast. Right. So today's designs have simply too many gates, too much memory, too many interfaces, and most importantly, too much software for a traditional FPGA-based prototype system to be able to do the job. Yeah. Okay, so what do I need? I'm glad you asked. We at Cadence have been asking ourselves the same thing. And the result is the new Proteum X1 Enterprise Prototyping System. When Proteum S1 was introduced in 2017, it marked the first significant innovation in FPGA-based prototyping in more than a decade by reducing bring-up time by an average of 80%. With Proteum X1, we are further expanding our technology leadership with the introduction of the industry's first scalable, data center-optimized enterprise prototyping platform. Architected from the ground up for scalability and flexibility in a data center optimized form factor, it is addressing the four major user requirements, performance, capacity, bring up time, and efficiency. Speed matters, right, Jürgen? Absolutely. One of the key innovations we introduced with Proteum X1 is our new Pathfinder partitioning and interconnect technology, enabling the best possible performance regardless of design size. It lets customers achieve 5 MHz on billion gate designs and up to 100 MHz and more on single FPGA designs, overcoming the key challenges in desktop prototyping systems that naturally drop in performance with growing capacity. A new configuration assistant helps the user to optimize the system configuration for their needs and for a specific design allowing them to achieve best possible performance. However, in addition to all these automated capabilities, we also preserve the ability to manually optimize the system even further for those who want to go the extra mile to get the last bit of speed out of it. Okay, but size matters as well, right? Correct, which leads us to the next innovation in Podium X1, scalable capacity. Okay. A innovative, blade-based, scalable hardware architectures enables our users to prototype virtually every design from small IoT and IP design to multi-billion gate, AI, graphics, and mobile chipsets. In contrast to classic desktop prototype systems that are significantly drop in speed for designs beyond 400 million gates, Proteum X1 is architected to reach multi-megahertz performance for billion gate designs. Each blade can operate completely standalone for smaller designs and can be combined with other blades to accommodate even the biggest designs. Up to eight blades can be mounted into our optional rack, and of course, multiple racks can be connected to. Okay, cool. But doesn't that make it even more complicated and time-consuming to bring up as design on Proteum X1? No, actually, just the opposite. Like earlier, when we talked about a smartphone living or dying with the software on it, what makes Proteum X1 so efficient is our industry-leading implementation and software debug suite, ensuring that your prototype comes up quickly, reliably, and has all the debug and interface capabilities to start firmware and software development as early as possible. We have a unified compile with Palladium C1 and Proteum S1 making sure that the designs come up in days or weeks, not months as in traditional prototyping. It also enables the easy transition from an emulation environment into prototyping. Mapping ASIC memories into FPGAs has always been a major pain point in prototyping. We have eliminated that pain once and for all with our unique memory combination and modeling technology, enabling our users to automatically map any and all memories into Proteum X1 automatically. 
And let's not forget the SOC interfaces. For that, we provide a rich portfolio of speed bridge adapters, for example, for PCIe, USB, Ethernet, and so on. Okay, cool. So what if I need even further debug capabilities? You're right. After all, your design is still under development and prototyping is a verification tool. To help with debugging, we have added a pretty elaborate set of debug capabilities. Of course, we can do the usual things like probing signals and creating waveforms. But then we have also added simulator and emulator-like capabilities, like being able to force internal signals into zeros or one states, monitor key signals in real time, capture tens of millions of clock cycles with a high-speed data capture card. And our most recent addition is prototyping full visibility, providing dynamic access to all signals without recompilation and improving overall verification throughput. Another interesting aspect of debug is debugging the software you are running on top of your designs. And software developers usually don't think and work in waveforms and probes. Software developers need a different set of debug tools. The ability to connect the software debugger, typically through a JTAG port, the ability to access any memory in the design, being able to set breakpoints, meaning to stop the clock of the design, and in some cases, having a transaction interface to directly connect software models to the hardware design running on Proteum X1. All this is supported and available, making it both a high-performance hardware regression and verification system, as well as a highly efficient software validation and debug solution. Okay, Jürgen, so what if I want more than one of my team members to use Proteum X1? Even the biggest design starts with smaller blocks, IP, and subsystem. And we have a mode for that. Proteum X1 is not only enabling prototyping of billing gate designs, it also offers single FPGA granularity multi-user to run jobs on the exact number of FPGAs needed, maximizing system utilization and efficiency. Okay, so Jürgen, this was a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? Proteum X1 is part of our connected portfolio of engines in the Cadence verification suite. Proteum X1 preserves all the key capabilities that users have come to appreciate from Cadence prototyping, in particular, the unified compile with the Palladium C1 enterprise emulation platform ensures design under test congruently, allowing users to transition from emulation to prototyping in days. No RTL changes required. Proteum X1 is the new platform of choice for early software, firmware development, high performance hardware regression, and full system validation. In conclusion, prototyping has just become, again, a lot easier with the addition of Proteum X1 to our FPGA-based prototype family. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me yet again, Jürgen. Thank you, Amelia. See you next time. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about Cadence's Proteum X1. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. Can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, keyword EE Journal. <laughs>